Nice car. <laughs> Welcome to Romancer TBR. We wanted to start with a little daily affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you haven't guessed by now, this is a headphones on type of podcast. Oh, it sure is. Not for anyone not related to us or with children in the vicinity. If you're feeling a uh, little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, listen to us in the, the line at the grocery store. I've done that before. It's a little thrilling. <laughs> do you, yeah. God, do you have a bonkers yeah. book to kick us oh, off? Oh, God. Okay. Um, so last episode you talked about throwing a book across the room i um, sure did yeah and it made me it sparked a memory and um in lisa clapas's uh someone to watch over me it's like a problematic fave there's a lot wrong with it but it's amnesia it is revenge seduction kind My of a little bit of all time it is because like basically this courtesan rejects him and makes fun of him and then he finds her looking like a drowned rat because she has been like knocked unconscious like overboard goes and then he like makes her i believe a servant and obviously there are a lot of bad undertones of it but i love it it's five stars for me <laughs> and she didn't rewrite it because i think the entire book would have to be rewritten so yeah that's <laughs> she not took one the L there I yeah know. same thing with then came you i read that one is also like there's she just She's just rolling with it. I have a um, lot of, like, I really like a problematic old historical. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, is this okay? Could this be written now? No. <laughs> exactly. Is it doing something interesting, though? Mm-hmm. Is it absolutely it, a wild time? Yes. I found it so interesting. There was a plot twist. I had a, a fantastic time. And there was a scene at the end where she walks into the room and he is laying naked on the bed, like reposed Me. like a scholarly Greek god. And he's reading a book. He, she walks in. He looks up. He throws the book across the room <laughs> and then he disrobes her and they have sex. <laughs> like he, he chucks the book across the room. I'm so <laughs> like... The concept of, like, I don't understand when people, like, lay around naked because yeah. I'm somebody who likes having clothes on. Yeah. Like, I, I just like, like, I, I love a good pajama set. Yep. yep. Love some comfy lounge clothes. I'm not, like, like, I don't think being naked is comfortable. Like, I could never sleep no. naked. That just doesn't feel, like, I just, like, I, I don't like it. I feel like I'm sweating on the, like. Yeah, there's just too much air on places. <laughs> too much air, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like reading naked. I, would like, I don't know what he was doing. Just like, why though? Like for I don't what? Know. Unless but it was for seduction purposes, in yeah. which case. I don't sure. think it was. She was I think she was like looking for him. She didn't know where he was, and then she like walked in the room and she was like calling for him. That's and hilarious. then he was just reading and he like throws the book. <laughs> what was the thought process like for that? He's like, hang on, I need to remove all of my clothing before I get into this book. I don't I don't know. Because it was from Heart POV at that point, and I lost I my love shit. To know. It, it's a book that happened, and I loved every second of it. The audiobook was great, and I've seen someone recently gave it like one star. They were like, "What the fuck was this?" And I was like, "Relatable, but also, it did everything I wanted it to do." I <laughs> so. really hate when you can tell that someone like either doesn't read a lot of historicals or yeah. doesn't read like older ones and mm -hmm. reviews like an old school or older yeah. historical and like applies modern where they're like this is so horrible yeah. but like, like gives it one star because i'm like i mean you have to read that in the then. context that it was written <laughs> though like it's yeah. still it still isn't okay you don't have yeah. to be like five yeah. stars everything is fine but you have to like read it within the context that created mm -hmm. it because like books are not written in a vacuum that's what happened to me with um, Beverly Jenkins's Night Song. I mm. looked on Goodreads and I thought it was published in 2008 because the edition I was reading was. And mm -hmm. it had like an updated cover. I had no clue. And then I'm reading it and I'm like, what's going on here? I research. It was like the 1990s. I was like, mm -hmm. this makes a lot more that sense. Tracks. I still wasn't like a fan of like what happened necessarily plot wise, but made so much more sense. Mm -hmm. Like it, you know... And this one, like, Then Came You is another one. I wasn't a fan of the general really plot, like, whatever. 
it just Mm -hmm. wasn't for me but this one blew my expectations out of the water i had such a good time i love amnesia it's one of my favorite tropes like overboard like um lorraine heath has once more my darling rogue and he discovers her and she's been like a childhood like he's been friends of a family and she's always stayed away from him and he finds her with amnesia and he puts her to work it was only going to be for like a day and then he like goes to her brother and he's like hey like have you like been missing her and the brother's like no like uh, she's fine and he's like well that's suspicious i'm gonna keep her because this doesn't seem right so he's like trying to like figure out like what went wrong to like put her in that situation so like trying to keep her safe but also she's (laughs) working for him (laughs) And then he's got like a huge ass tattoo on his back. And he's like, yeah, every person has to like wash my back. Oh my God. So she has to like bathe him. Again, maybe not the best situations, but I loved that book so much. It was so, and like the first sex scene does happen when she has amnesia. So it's like very vague. And then the second one happens when she like knows who she is. Um, So I get like, you know, it. I feel like it's almost impossible to enjoy the amnesia trope if you're not also pretty comfortable with dubious consent. Yeah. I haven't read a ton of amnesia romances. Me, yeah. Oh, I went that specifically I, out to find it. <laughs> I bought one recently that was specifically like, this is an oh, amnesia which romance. Yeah. Um, Caroline Linden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I read that Something one. Something about a Marquis. Uh, yep, I loved it. And I was like, sure, amnesia sign me up. But His you belly like, button on that cover, though. Is, yes, that is a, it is a problem. Where what's mm-hmm. going on there? Um, but I like I like amnesia as a trope because it's like not a real thing. Yeah, like that's not that's just not a real thing. Yeah. Um, it, and so it makes no sense, but it is so prevalent in the genre. Um, I mean, and, but you can't read it and not be okay with yeah. dubious consent in fiction. Yeah. In fiction, I think the dubious consent. <laughs> yeah historically in the genre has done a lot of really interesting mm-hmm. work and so it's again like something that i think you have to read in context but also like i don't know it's a it's wild it is sure it is. okay like, in real it's life like revenge seduction you know no, but <laughs> i sure do have a great time reading it mm-hmm. it it just i mean i grew up on the movie overboard like i love 80s movies in general but, like, that movie, I watch it every year at our cabin. I watch it multiple times. My dad's like, we've already watched it. I'm like, I don't care. Um, and so that obviously, like, started my love of amnesia. Um, and then it's just continued. And I've asked for Rex. And I've made a shelf on Goodreads. And it has taken me to great places. <laughs> Namely, Lisa Kleypas and Lorraine Heath. So. <laughs> well, I mean, to segue to today's it's a Lorraine, yeah. book, this, I mean... It's not amnesia, oh, no. But it is like <laughs> it is it everything. Let's touch on some like dubious consent mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. like a few different things. Um, oh, and so today boy. we're talking about the one, the only, the gorilla <laughs> twin swap book, mm-hmm. the Earl, Earl takes, takes all. all by Lorraine Heath, he which took my book breath away too. That I read straight up on your recommendation when you were like, <laughs> the because twin all swap you have to say. Book. All you have to say is, have you read the Gorilla Twins book? And if they say yes, you have a great conversation of how crazy it was. If they say mm-hmm. no, w- leave the room. Don't even expand okay, upon it. No, you have to <laughs> expand. expand because it. usually if you say, have you read the Gorilla Twins yeah. swap book? Their response is not no. The response is the what? <laughs> exactly. And I know and so because then- I was on a panel, like a historical romance panel, and I said I just read the Lorraine Heath Gorilla Twin Swap book, and the three other panelists went, "The what? <laughs> Elaborate immediately." Yeah, and I I did not have that same initiation to this book. I picked it up at a used bookstore, I think, or a Goodwill, and it was one of my first Lorraine Heath books. I was still in the, um, you know the beginning stages of my historical romance and I was at our cabin and I picked it up. I was like, well, this sounds like a wild time because it's basically um, his, him and his brother, the hero go off to a grand tour in Africa and his brother gets killed over there. His and brother is the Earl. Yes. His brother is the Earl. He's in the first book. So I had just read this one standalone and then when i went back and read the first one i was like oh that's sad you get killed but i I was over it um (laughs) and so the earl has a wife at home she is pregnant and she has lost 
all of her previous pregnancies. And so on his dying breath, he's like, you know, don't don't tell her that you like pretend to be me and until she has the baby. And thinking the that bro- if she finds mm-hmm. out her husband has died, it It'll will be upset a tr- her into a miscarriage. And, yep. And so oh my God. <laughs> and so the brother, who has obviously always loved her. Right. Um, but of course acted like he hated her. Yes. And intentionally made her hate him. Yes. There the there's a prologue, and it's basically him stumbling upon her in the garden, and he thinks that she knows who he is. So he kisses her. And then she's like, oh, Gray or whatever the Earl's name was. And he's like, oh, my God, she thinks I'm my brother. And he was so hurt about it. So then obviously he lashes out. And then the brother walks up and then she marries the brother. And he's always been like thinking about this kiss, but he's been distancing himself because he doesn't want to feel things for his brother's sister. Nope. No. (laughs) brother's wife. (laughs) That would be his sister. (laughs) We don't do that unless it's my life with Derek and it's the step-sibling dynamic because that shook my like body <laughs> when i was watching that show <laughs> when i was watching that show um so yeah they've been like enemies the entire time after that because she thought he like tricked her into kissing him um and so he comes back as his brother and this man has to hear everyone in society say how happy they are that the Earl survived and that his good-for-nothing brother was the one killed. It's rough. It is so rough, rough out there for him. He... However, pleasantly, the wife that he's pretending is his wife because he's pretending to be mm-hmm. his twin brother does not say that. I mean, she's, like, glad that her husband, so she yeah. thinks, has made it back. Yep. But all and of a she... sudden, she's, like, actually kind of sympathetic towards him. Like, she is... what is this? And he's like, oh, that's sweet of you, but I can't say thank you because that's me. Um, and also the brother, the Earl, had a uh, hearing loss in one of his ears. This mm-hmm. is relevant to the plot. Um, <laughs> and so they get back and he, like his friends notice something's off. So like they're Oh yeah, they know him they, almost immediately. Yeah, because they're he's like, so mm. different. So different. And um, they kind of, like, tell him what he's got to do to, like, you know, he's got to tug on his ear, like, his bad ear, like, all of that. And I'm like, uh, it helps that, like, they had been apart, the husband and wife, the Earl yeah. and, um, I'm blanking on her name. Is it- It's Edward and it Julia? Julia. Oh, yep. I was right. Yeah, look okay. at you. Look, look at, at my you. memory. Um, But it helps that they had already, they had spent so long apart. Like, Mm -hmm. this would not work if they were, like, a really close married couple, but number one, they already weren't super close, and so she even thinks it's kind of odd how close he is to her. Yes. And- Because the brother doesn't know Right, because he doesn't know what life is like for this married couple behind closed doors, so he's just doing his best. Um, (laughs) And he, like, was having all the thoughts I was having if I was in this situation. Like, what are the pet names? Like, how do I Mm -hmm. interact? Like, you don't know. Um, But also, Mm -hmm. they have spent- I think it's like over a year. Like they've been apart for a very long time. Like the tour and she was loves very him. long. Like, right, but like they just like physically yes. have spent. Like they yes. have been in geographical separate locations mm-hmm. for a very long time. And so it's not. I mean, it's odd, but it doesn't strike her as too weird because she's basically mm-hmm. like, we've spent so long apart, we have to kind of like re get to know yeah. each other now. And so um, she she's thinking to herself, "Wow, he's come back from Africa, hot." Like he's more I mean, they rugged. Were twins, but they are like a <laughs> he, little rugged. Like he's like, more rugged. He's more built. Like he is now like more affectionate and because more like the first sensual. and I you feel bad for the first Earl because <laughs> rest in peace, good sir. But he wasn't as sensual. He wasn't as gregarious of a lover. Um, <laughs> 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 like good obviously, choice. there's normally some some area that the new person, you know gives to the the former partner that the other one didn't and so while the dynamics is nice because edward or uh gray i don't even know what his real name was but gray the first earl wasn't a bad guy so you you can't really hate him but you're also not really sad that he's dead and you know you may be thinking how am i ever going to root for this this is just absurd and it's sketchy and he needs to tell her it works. It it works so well. I, think I was sobbing. The thing, like, and I 
talk about this every time I recommend the book is it's sort of like <laughs> cognitively <laughs> dissonant because the premise is so bonkers. Mm -hmm. Like your twin brother's killed like bodied by a gorilla. <laughs> oh yeah. So then so then it gets revealed that a gorilla just took him out. Yeah. And he was like looking at a like a little like, baby gorilla. Body slammed. <laughs> Your brother gets bodied by a gorilla and with his dying breath is like, go pretend to be me. And also take her to Switzerland, which you mm -hmm. don't understand until the end. No. Um, no. And so you have to, like, the, this guy is going to go pretend to be his twin brother, the Earl, who is married for a certain length of time. And you're like, that's a yeah. bonkers premise. Like, this is a yeah. banana sounding book. But the thing is, as silly as the premise sounds, this is like the angstiest. Oh. Like, Pine is such a good romance. Person. Like, it's so angsty and so emotional and weirdly slow burn, which I was yes. not expecting. And, and he, he very feels much bad about out. it. Yeah, like, he's not into it. He's, he's, he's actively not trying to seduce her. Like, he's yeah. actively, like, she's seducing away him. her touches. Yeah. Because <laughs> she's this like, poor man. I've been gone. I'm kind of horny. Like, well, and she's pregnant. So, homegirl's <laughs> yeah. horny. Yeah. And he's like, oh no. Mm -hmm. um but there's only so much you can resist but also he's like i'm gonna wait i'm gonna tell her it's just like after the baby is born yeah. like this is not yeah. an indefinite situation and so you're kind of like even though this is not the right thing like what are you yeah. gonna do your brother asked you to do this you don't want her to lose the baby he's gonna tell her and, and then he was and then he, just, he loves like, her doesn't tell her where like the baby is born and he's like well maybe if i just wait like a little bit longer like maybe i could just keep ugh. doing this and he's not going to point, but then he is because at this point, he's, like, fully in love with her, with their life, with the child. Yeah, he loves like, that baby. Oh. It's he, like, so... Oh. And Caroline and I just had, like, a half-hour discussion about our love of heroes with children, especially Listen, in historical romances. my most heteronormative one of them. BS is how much I love a baby log. Yep. Unless, very yep. specifically, the characters do not want children, I yep. want a baby log in a historical. Or it's, like, magic sperm. And yeah, I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want that. I want... Yep. I just want a good baby log. And, mm -hmm. or and adoption. Or the hero. Yes. Yep. Tom Severin. Um, looking at you. Or like, I mean, um, Wes Ravenel is mm -hmm. like, well, I think they do end up having, isn't she pregnant by the most recent book? But like, he step is like the stepfather. Yes. Of her two Yeah. Sons. And then if you want like the glorious, like, can I call you dad moment? And then oh, and the other one's like, can I call you mom? Like, it's just, that's in Chasing Cassandra, oh, by the way, listen, my favorite of that series. It Wes is, Ravenel is, moved into my brain. He, I cleared daddy. out some drawers for him. He has <laughs> taken up permanent residence. Wes Ravenel like, is actually, we need to do an episode on that book. Oh, yeah. He's um, like, can I call you dad? I was like, I'm calling him dad already. Like, <laughs> go for he, it. Listen, I love romance heroes that I would never interact with in real life. Like yeah. an alpha, that's my favorite. Like, mm -hmm. I, if I ran into that man IRL, I'm running the yeah. other way. However, Wes Ravenel is the hero I have found who so far most closely represents oh, a man that I would actually be attracted to in real Like, that perfect man. Mm -hmm. Perfect man. Well, and I love, because obviously I don't really read series in order, um, Caroline convinced me to start again because I didn't really have the best experience with Cold Hearted Rake when I first read it. I just wasn't in the mood. And then I read it. I loved it. And then you get to see Wes, Wes transformation oh, from so like book good. to book. And so it definitely hit a lot harder. Because I read Wes book um, randomly. That was like my first Lisa Claypas book. It was like the only one available at my library. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could just read it and be fine. And I mean, I did. I understood what was happening. But it hit a lot better, obviously, when after you see reading him develop books. And knowing who Sebastian those. was. Because my, my only yes. note of the, my first read is, wow, her dad is hot. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> My and it was correct. One of my two favorite and he was also daddy. dukes named Sebastian. He is also a daddy. God, I love that uh -huh. man. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just constantly think about um, the holiday with Jude Law. He's Mr. Napkinhead, but he also is like, I am daddy. <laughs> and that's that's who he is. Jude and Law is so, low-key who I would picture. Like, if oh I had to cast Sebastian God. St. Vincent. I think – I mean, Law. I know he's, like, blonde. He I don't care. Him. I'm casting – Jude Law has that, like, suave – like very smooth in control vibe that I think really anyway the old takes all um there's uh, yeah where were we? so there's a kid they the had the baby woman. he was going to oh spoilers by the way from this point mm -hmm. forward major spoilers really. um yeah you should read the book uh because I think the I reveal would. of like when because you're like when is she gonna mm -hmm. 
real. Like, he has to tell her or she's going to find out. Like, there's yep. no way to continue on with this indefinitely. And I think it's so painful. Yeah, like, it – because, like, he, at this point, he is fully in love with her and he is so conflicted. Because it, it, it would be different if he was doing this out of malicious intent or mm-hmm. – if he wasn't really conflicted but he just wants the best for her and he doesn't want to ruin her life so he's like fully prepared to just like be and she's also like fallen in love with like the things like yes. the parts of him that are just edward the new part and, yeah like she like kind of recognizes like that mm-hmm. he's different and that because he's a lot more touchy and he's a lot more caring he would like cared for her like so hard when she was pregnant yeah and oh, yeah. that was hot and he like notices things about her that the husband never did like the and the illustrations and the animal yeah so he he's like a storyteller so like he she pretended to hate his like crazy storytelling he's like the one who'd be like a bonfire just like going for it like telling tall tales and um so he like tells stories she loves to draw so at one point they like oh they like she creates illustrations he writes the story he's like telling the story so to the kid well, while she's he's been, been banished like, by her watercoloring these woodland creatures Mm -hmm. that are like little characters and they're very clearly based on people that she knows yep the characters in the book yeah um anyway spoilers (laughs) because the reveal is very very like emotionally raw i think because it happens at such like the peak moment of vulnerability and remember when i said that uh the original earl's one of his ears did not work. So throughout the entire book, when she's trying to get spicy, uh, she will she will like whisper like dirty talk into that ear. She doesn't think he can hear it. And she's not like ready. She doesn't think it's proper. Or that he would sexual, be into it because or that he her would, actual yeah, husband he was, was not. He wasn't super. really. Um, and so she's just letting loose into that ear. And he's like so turned on. But has to pretend times. not to hear yes. it. Yes, until <sighs> until the moment like he's just I I can't remember like the exact like what he says because she's just like gearing him on in that ear and he's like I don't yes. know what he says but I do remember like they have had physical intimacy like he's mm-hmm. gotten her off before but they kept she's gotten off, like, actual him off. Of sex because yeah, cause he was in the bath. Pregnant. Yep, he was in the bath and she like jerked him off and he was mm-hmm. like trying to resist because he was like, I can't, but also Right. Please. He felt weird like real conflicted, yep. but also he couldn't yep. put her off without giving himself away. It was a whole yep. thing. And then but they have not had like penetrative sex because presumably, like, oh the baby. We don't want to risk mm-hmm. it, right? But now there's like no reason to keep putting that off and she's getting suspicious. And so finally he yep. I think he decided he's like, I'm just gonna keep doing this indefinitely. Yep. Like she never yep. needs to know. Because he like and again, that sounds kind of skeevy, but like in con- it is it, a little skeevy, he feels but so also- bad doing it. Like he feels so bad, but he just wants her to be happy. And like he Like he is it okay? That- no. Yeah, no. But, but he it's Do I love it? Yeah. yeah is it like so like high emotion there's a lot of gray area to play in which i love anyway so she talks dirty in his ear and he moans Uh or like responds Mm -hmm. yeah he like tells her she like wants to do something and he's like yeah do it and then she's and she freezes (laughs) because i feel like in the back of her mind she's i think there's like a scene where she's like i've always known yeah like didn't want to like confront this she knew something was up yeah and that just like confirmed it and she's like you're edward oh and it hits it's so painful because like not only does she have to come to terms with the fact that like she's been living with Mm -hmm. this person who's been lying to her but she also is just now finding out that her husband has been dead for months yep and obviously this this is before like the third act so like this is the 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 breakup that i love you know like the true drama like you can't avoid it like it's not one making a choice to leave the other it's literally she, he's been pretending to be her dead husband. Like, she's got a lot of reason. <laughs> and he, like, accepts that she has the right to be angry. So he's just very sad. And, like, it's well, a big I, house. So he's yes. still there. But, yeah. And it happens early enough in the book. Yes. Yes. I so think then around, the second like, 50%. Half, it does. Because so the you second need the time to rec- It can't be a 75% breakup. No. And so what makes the book so heartwarming and impactful is the fact that the, then the next half of the book is them falling in love knowing 
who each of them are and her warring with her anger, but seeing how he is with the baby and like figuring out that he meant everything that he did. And so it just works so much better having it not hanging over your head anymore because you are, you're wondering, I mean, my friend Becca, she just read it today and she like texted me. She's like, how far does this go on? Like, how mm-hmm. is this farce? Like how long? Cause you can't have and, a like really yeah. quick third act recovery. After yeah. That. Yeah. And so I just love when every, anyone reads this for the first time. Mm-hmm. And again, she was like, yeah, like the whole thing got a little bit old, but it had like, and I was like, it had no right being that good. Right. And she's like, yeah, like, I don't know why it worked so well. And it's that's Lorraine like Heath. Peak in, pining. In mm-hmm. So because much then, emotion. Because he's always been in love with her. And then you find out that she has always like had feelings for him and she's been cold and distant from him because she didn't want to have to feel anything for him. Because like in the beginning, like every party they were at, like they would be at odds. She didn't want to invite him over. And so he just was heard about that. She was heard about stuff. And and then you also come to realize that the brother knew, like totally knew. Yeah. At yeah. least at the very least that like Edward had <laughs> feelings. <laughs> because and then the third act that you do get is them being like, well we can't like what are we going to do? You yeah. have to tell everyone but then we won't be able to be together because the laws at this point for ba- it's like you can't marry You an can't in-law. marry your yep, yep. So you like, can't Like you can't marry your brother's widow that was illegal and so like Mm -hmm. if he tells everyone that he's actually the new earl and not the old earl then they could never marry and so they're like whole third act thing is like oh we finally like got it together and we're in love but now we literally cannot be together and so he's fully prepared to say (sighs) he's gonna live a lie Uh uh-huh and at first she's like okay i can i suppose i can handle that like i love you like we'll figure it out but then obviously She's like, no, he, like, I can't make him do this. Like, Morals because then everyone out. was like trash. Everyone was trashing Edward. Mm-hmm. And she was like pissed off about it. She was like, no, like he is doing all of this so well. And she was proud of him. And she wanted to be able to be like, I am proud of him. I love him. But this is Edward. And yeah. I'm done with you being happy that he's dead. <laughs> this is where my like subversive brain kicked in, though, and was like, just shut up and deal with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was that, like, just be happy. And like, I knew yeah. that there was going to be a way to work around it. But I was like, I'm this, truly, I was like, thing? I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, I, I did. Was truly. They I really kept that. pushing the like, take her to Switzerland thing. And oh, I was like, see, see, you, I didn't you, know about the, got the context clues. I don't. I but just, I, kn- I knew it was like, just go alone. Mm-hmm. Just go get married in a different country. And the fact mm-hmm. that he had kept saying, take her to Switzerland, I was like, oh. Yeah. Okay. So the answer is right in front of you. In, in Switzerland, you can marry, like, that law doesn't apply, and mm-hmm. England will recognize that marriage. Yep. Yep. Um, so. And they go to, like, the house of, in the next book after that, um, there's, like, an old Duke who's kind of going mad, but he. He's like, why? Why won't you just take her to Switzerland? And then the yeah. light bulb clicks, and He's that's like, how they solve you it. You dumbass. <laughs> but before that, was he the one to reveal to like the House of Lords yeah. that he he got up in front of the House of Lords yeah. and was like, um, "I'm actually Edward." I think when she was finally going to say no, please just stay, then he did that, and she was like, "Oh shit!" And then his friends yeah. all came over and they're like, "Did you see?" And she was like, "What?" Because <laughs> then he it's wanted. Rough. He he wanted to make it seem – so then he was like, she didn't know. I coerced her. Oh, um, yeah. It's not her fault. She can't be ostracized. I'm the villain. And so it was all for that. And it just – it really worked. Well, right. It because even so if, well. like, even if they didn't want to be together and it was like, okay, like, it's time for you to tell everyone who you are. Like, stop living this lie. If he did, mm-hmm. she would have been living in sin for months. Yep. Like, living with yep. this man she was not married to. So we're adding layer upon layer. Layers. It's and an it's, onion, like an oh, ogre. Don't. Not another Shrek <laughs> reference. If Shrek was formidable for me. Formidable. For- formidable. <laughs> Not formidable. For- formative. What's the word? Formative. <laughs> it was also formidable. My my whole thing on this podcast is going to be just getting phrases <laughs> and words absolutely wrong. I'm not, was, I'm um, not um, sunsetting. I'm sunsetting as a... <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... That's who I am. Oh so my that, that, God. that one Sarah McLean character you were talking about, how she gets all these phrases wrong, that's yeah, me. Juliana. Except for it's just <laughs> It's my... not because it's your second language. <laughs> no. Which it's because I'm just a, a wee bit um, <laughs> confused. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's that. Literally, why is this book so good? And then you get, you know, the epilogue to end all epilogues. Yeah. 
of like many many years in the future. Uh, well, like, that's a that's kids. a Lorraine Heath wedding day that's a, oh and like the God, ghost of the dead brother like <laughs> telling him he did a good job i was like get out of here because then because then the son is like or is it the daughter who's getting married and they just the daughter's asking getting for advice married. and it was too much because then she was getting married to like one of the friends kids i think oh i didn't know that and well that's it- illegal from here on out that's canceled um no it'll just make me cry is the problem oh oh i was like what i mean no lorraine Heath (laughs) epilogues i they unlock something in me so unhinged when i read her book um is it beauty tempts the beast i believe the way i was sobbing okay i was on the floor sobbing Uh, i hurt all over like that epilogue Every Lorraine Heath epilogue takes me to another level, but that one destroyed me. Um, and then the one after this one in the series, because it was like a wrapping up of the series, that one took me out. Um, but that's a Lorraine Heath uh, staple, is an epilogue so many years in the future. The Duchess Hunt, take me out. I'm not ready for that. Um, yeah. So I mean, I... this is the only Lorraine Heath I've read so far. But oh my it does God, you're in seem to be ride. like it's not quite a baby log because yeah. they're not ba- like it's not them with babies mm-hmm. or pregnant. It's them many, many years in the future, which is far more likely to just yeah. absolutely obliterate all of my emotions. Because I don't like facing the mortality <laughs> of these characters. Like sometimes I will just sit and think about how i'm reading historical romance and i'm in the present so like all these characters characters are dead are dead and i truly i have to take a moment (laughs) while we're on a lorraine heath since you haven't read any others can may i present to you the book where um there's the hero and many years ago he was in a carriage accident with another person his friend or his cousin or someone and um crashes the curricle and um the friend is paralyzed he now has to use a wheelchair and fast forward to the friend um or a cousin whatever he is i truly don't know um having a wife and she can't get pregnant oh i know the book you're talking about Uh and so Mm. the, the, the friend is like hey guy who put me in a wheelchair not to law that over your head, but she needs a baby. She wants a baby. You got to go impregnate her. I'm like, this is with my full permission. Go make a baby. And at first, she is so angry. She is. Because <laughs> yeah. she loves him. She loves her husband. She, she is so angry and insulted. And you're wondering, how does this have an HEA? Oh, boy, does it. Boy, does it. No, because I'm actually very genuinely wondering. This is another one of those books that sounds like the most bananas premise in the world that can only possibly work in historicals, but then ends up yeah. being like 100% angst all the way. It's Waking Up with the Duke is what the book was called. The wife finally agrees for reasons I can't remember. And they go to this cottage and make a baby. And things get revealed and it's, it's a wild ride. And an HEA happens, so go forth. And That's one of those situations it. where, like, you start the book and you're like, I actually don't think an HEA is possible. And so it's so impressive where you're like, how do you actually come back from that? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you oh, – mm-hmm. I love romance. I love Lorraine Heath. She's one of my favorite authors. Um, she is truly just so bonkers, bananas, balls to the wall, like, all of her books. And they work for me 90% of the time. I've only found a few that I wasn't a fan of, but like, she's quite the star, quite the star indeed. And I, I love it so much. Uh, yeah, that book again is just so the premise, like how, how, how do you have it and how does it work and how are you like rooting for these characters? I, was I mean, that was me with the Earl time. Takes All. How do you yeah. root for this guy who's yeah. pretending to be this woman's dead husband who is also his twin? How? And then you do. There's also a moment with um she's like illustrated all the animals and when initially he like goes in and sees the paintings and he's yes. able to identify who the different characters are yes. and he, he's like a wolf or something like a no he, or a weasel or so, whatever it is initially like a weasel 
the animal is like not good and he's like oh that's edward and he's like Mm -hmm. very like self-deprecating but she doesn't realize that it's self-deprecating and then later and i think it's post reveal yep it is um she's like showing him her like new updated ones and there's a new Mm -hmm. i think it's a is it a fox i think it's a fox i i think it is because i love fox characters and Mm -hmm. we'll have to talk about them with sanj because she has a lot of feelings about fox characters um and I told her about this book because I was like, boy, have I got a fox character for you. <laughs> um, and he can't figure out who the, the fox is. And she's like, really? You don't know who it is? And, like, reveals that, like, this is who he actually mm-hmm. is as opposed to who she thought he was. Oh! It's so good. And if you weren't already crying, you you will cry there. And then you'll cry at the end. And then you'll cry everywhere. It's... I think I cried fully, like, after the, yeah. like, post-reveal, like, she was about yeah. to like sleep with this man only to realize Mm -hmm. he'd been lying and was not in fact her husband and oh she's a widow and oh the husband that she loved very much and thought that she had been spending the past few months with has been dead for months she has been a widow and just not known it and then she like goes to the the family tomb to like (laughs) cry on the coffin that she thought was edward's which she was already kind of sad about but now she realizes is actually her (laughs) husband and she's like talking to him and i was like oh and just the layers of the husband knowing and recognizing and wanting his brother and his wife to be yeah, happy. Yeah, like, as he's dying, like, he's telling him, take her to Switzerland. Which is yeah. what, of course, makes it okay yeah. when they realize that that's what he was saying. Is that they're like, oh my mm-hmm. god, he was telling us. Because then there's also the permission. You right. Know? So, it, on every level, <sighs> it mysteriously works. And, and also, Edward is just making bad decisions this whole time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where you're like, you cannot. And he's like, maybe if I just lay, wait a little while longer. My friend Alicia recently read it on my recommendation mm-hmm. and was mm-hmm. like, please read this book. And she's like reading more historicals now. Yeah. Um, and she does kind of like chaotic reading blog type TikToks. Ooh. Um, and so she did one with this book. And she said something about like, why is he doing the things that he's doing? <laughs> and I was like, that's. What you ask Edward the entire book. Yeah, You're like, like why are you doing so, the things that you're doing? He's just so lovable because he really is just making the worst decisions and he's put in this situation. Like, he's doing his best, but yes. he's wrong. And you're like, not Edward, good enough. <laughs> why is this the choice that you made? Yeah. But also, what other choice did he have? You know? He did. I mean, I mean, he could have. At a certain her, point, but... he had some choices. And yeah, I, I read the others in the series, and I liked both of them, but this is by far my favorite. The other the others were like four-star reads. Um, I stopped at the end of the third one, like I said before, but this one was just a full level. Like, when I first read it, I gave it four stars, I think. Same thing with uh, Waking Up with the Duke, and then I reread it, and I was like, fuck it, five stars. Like, if, it can ma- if I want to reread it, and it makes me feel this much the second time, and I'm, again, biting my nails, like worried even though I know and like when I stopped to like really realize because I read it physically the first time listened to the audiobook the second time and I think since I knew how it was going to end I wasn't skimming like when I read physically I just really don't slow down and sometimes I need to and so with the audiobook I was able to really just notice all of the little details and really Mm -hmm. take it in and so it made it a five-star read and I have never looked back I have looked forward to this episode. And, like, I'm not really an angsty person. Like, I don't – oh, I'm an angsty person. But I don't really like angsty romance uh, all the time. But Lorraine Mm -hmm. Heath is an exception to that. She can do what she wants, and I'll applaud her. I will do – like, my absolute favorites tend to be more lighthearted because I like a comedy. A daring pursuit. But there's, like, always a little place in my heart that's, like, reserved for the, like, either, like, most intense second chance romance like something that's like painful and it's gonna be a hundred percent pining and you're gonna be in Mm -hmm. emotional agony the whole time and it's like this one the day the duchess sarah mclean which i don't i really don't know if it's gonna work for you but like man did it work for me where it's like how do you come back from us like this is a second chance that you don't think is gonna work yeah he starts the series cheating yep that's what you told when one of the episodes that we were and you're like how do you come back from that and i i don't think it works for everyone but personally it worked for me i so there are a few eloisa james that are that same premise um there's one of her series it like starts out and like you know that he's cheated on her and then it takes like five books to get to their book they've been like main characters in every other book too like you get their pov it's weird um and so like 
she takes like five books or whatever to build up to their relationship and so like when you finally get there like it pretty it worked for me it wasn't my favorite mm-hmm. of the series but like i could like i could handle it um i think it depends on the, the why yeah i mean sometimes like i can handle it and like there's another one her ugly the ugly duchess um where they get married very young she overhears a conversation with him and his father where she thinks that he didn't really want to marry her and he was just marrying her for money. And the they, like, consummate their marriage. They're both virgins. And uh, good night for them both. Next morning she hears this. She banishes him. She's like, get the hell out of this house. Never want to see you again. So he leaves for seven years. He becomes a pirate. He oh, you've told me about becomes this, sexually skilled. Sure. So he doesn't say chaste. She's very chaste and doesn't get with anyone and she's been kind of like this she's like very fashionable now like she's like remade her image she's like the ugly duckling that's what it is Mm -hmm. and um he it's been seven years she's like i'm gonna annul this marriage because he's presumed dead no one has seen him i am very angry at him still and she's in court the house of lords preparing to annul it and he barges in girthy pirate tree trunk thighs Picks her up, bodies her over his shoulder, walks the fuck out. Honestly, oh. iconic of him. <laughs> walks out, and then the rest of the book is them just <laughs> having a marriage in trouble and a second chance. And it truly worked for me. And that yeah. book doesn't like it's like very mixed Divisive. reviews, which I yeah. I totally get. Um, and Eloisa James is one of those where I either love her books or I hate them. Um, and so, for some reason, I loved that one. And he was just a very girthy pirate, and that's what sold it for me. And it worked. <laughs> I mean, that's one that, like, was it technically cheating? Yeah, but, like... Yeah, like, she thought was he, like, it? He, he was never going to come back. They're, like, yeah. technically married, but they were never, like, emotionally yep. committed yeah. to each other. Yeah, exactly. And so that, like, to me, is, like, even if by law worked. you are married, mm-hmm. like, your relationship doesn't really develop yeah. until after he's done all of that. This one is more, like, I think – I understand for some people cheating is, like, an absolute no-go in, in yeah. romance. I think depending on the intention – not that it's ever okay, but if it's, mm-hmm. like, in this case, a one-time thing that happened because he was lashing out in a really – like, she hurt him. And so mm-hmm. that was his way of, like, he freaked out and did that and then, like, spent his life regretting it, right? And, like, yeah. trying to make up for it. That is, like, a redeemable moment for me. Like, again, it wasn't okay. He should not have done yeah. it. But he, like, understands that it was wrong yeah. and, like, regrets he's it and dangling, wants to make up for it. If he's dangling over the pits, of, like, flaming pits of hell right, for right. the entire book. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can come back from that and redeem that character mm-hmm. if the cheating was just, like, you weren't giving me what I wanted. So I went like, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there is an irredeemable kind of cheating to me where I'm like, you can't come back from that because you just like felt like it. I do love a moment when she thinks he's cheating and like Mm -hmm. he leads her to believe it for some reason or like she just just assumes and he doesn't, you know, deny it. And then obviously it gets to a point where he's like, it's always been you. Because I'm like, why did you let her believe? Yeah, but like, but I there's love... always his reason for it, mm-hmm. and it's a stupid so, like, reason. But I eat so, it like, every I, time. Yeah, but like, I I love when she thinks and assumes so that's like the driving force. But then he's actually never done it, and so like there there are levels to it. Um, but yeah, because well, I love like... jealousy and romance. Yes, I eat it up every time. Is it toxic? Perhaps. Yes. Yes. Like. When they've told everyone else to stay away, love it. I love when they're in agony. I do, admittedly. <laughs> she whispers, I love when they're in agony. <laughs> I love when they're in agony. That, frankly, <laughs> is j- just, the, I mean, that sums up really my feelings about the Earl Takes All as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just love when He's they're suffering in agony. For it. He's suffering. She also has to suffer too, but not as much. She yeah. isn't suffering the whole book. Mm-hmm. He yeah, like, is suffering the whole book. I found I found her to be a character that I really loved, like because at no point were you like I wouldn't probably make that same <laughs> reaction. Yeah, what do you do in that situation? Yeah, yeah. she's in a yeah. weird spot. This is a really mm-hmm. good book for any. Like I always say that like I like to sit in gray areas. Mm-hmm. Like I, I and speak he's that the Earl out. of Grayling. So oh, T. Um, but I think if you also are like, oh, I love a good gray area, like a morally complex, like these characters are making 
really weighty decisions where there isn't necessarily an easy way out of it. Like, there isn't a right and wrong. I think this is a really good book to sit in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I And, like, I read this before. I really had an opinion on what I liked, what I disliked. And it just really blew my blew my mind well on that note Look follow that. us on socials socials romance your tbr fringe book mm-hmm. reviews salty, salty caroline, caroline reads. reads um i get what are they subscribe follow us like where, like comment wherever subscribe. you listen to podcasts <laughs> i hate yeah. ending these no because also will <sighs> hannah succeed in getting this wherever you listen to podcasts if if you're listening <laughs> to it she has achieved it that is, Tune that in is next week for oh. uh, not Fake me having no idea. Fake engagements. Oh, yes. let's go. Let us go to the beach each. Let's go get a wave. They <laughs> 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 say. <clears throat> yeah, that happened. Oh, Christ. <laughs> to quote a Sarah McLean hero. Oh, my God. Lorraine Heath also, in every book, she- obsessed with toes and heroes who say, oh, Christ. Very verklempt. Oh, Christ! <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Because in every audiobook, he's like mid, <laughs> either like throes of passion or just so like done with her shit. And he's like, oh, Christ. And, like the audiobook narrator every time. He's like her delicate toes. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Cut the recording.